Hello, my name is Claire and I'm here to tell you about dog training. I'll tell you about me, how I became a dog trainer, what type of trainer I am and what dog training involves. Positive reinforcement means adding something immediately after a behaviour occurs which makes the frequency of the behaviour increase. Using positive reinforcement to train your dog means that you reward the behaviours that you like. You can use praise, life rewards such as games, walks or car rides, food or toy play as rewards, whatever your dog loves. Positive reinforcement training is also used in zoos and wildlife parks to teach the animals to actively participate in their health care. You can teach an elephant to give you his foot so that you can trim his nails or teach a cheetah to hold his neck against the bars so that you can take a blood sample without having to sedate him. If the animal loves to take part in the training, then they will enjoy the learning. So what does a dog trainer do? Well, there's a large variety in dog training, but the main bulk of our work tends to be owners that are having training difficulties with their dogs that they would like us to help them with. So it could be that um, the dog is running off on a walk, for example, or not coming back when they're called, or it could be they're jumping up on visitors. Um, it could be that they are reacting to the doorbell and running up and barking, or maybe they're pulling really hard on the lead or digging and chewing um, the house. So what we would do is help the owners to understand their dogs and the reasons why they're doing that behaviour and help the dog to learn new skills that the owner finds more acceptable so that we can help them um, harmoniously come back together again. We also work with other professionals. So it could be, for example, a groomer that maybe has a dog that they're struggling to handle and groom. So we, we would work alongside them and their owners to make sure the dog feels much more comfortable with perhaps the hairdryer or the clippers. The same goes for a vet surgery. So it could be that the dog is a little bit worried about going into the vets. So what we would do is help the dog to participate in their care. So we teach something called cooperative care, which is where the dogs actively participate in the things that we would like to do to them. So we teach them to put their head in the muzzle rather than us putting it on them. They find it fun to put their head in it. It could be that we teach them to stand still for an injection, something that the dogs then can have control over and feel much more comfortable with in a place that can be a little bit scary for them like the vets. It could be that we work alongside a behaviourist. So while they're doing their behaviour programme with the dog, there could be some training aspects that we can help alongside um, to take some of the pressure off the behaviourist and to work more closely with the owner um, in that context. It's also um, fun to train dogs um, stuff to build their confidence, for example, and that can help with a behaviour programme if perhaps there is a fearful dog. So things like hoopers and agility and scent work, the dog taking part in that could help their behaviour programme overall. We also do fun things generally. So it could be that the owner wants to build a strong relationship with their dog, or even it's a new rescue dog that's just come into the home that's not so sure, um, hasn't settled quite well yet. We would do little bits with the dog to kind of help build their relationship with their owner. And that tends to be by having great fun with them. So there's also Sorts of training things that we can do with them. So for myself, my specialism is puppies. So it would be early education. So it's teaching them all the things to help them grow up to be well-adjusted dogs in the puppy classes that I run and the various other things that I do um, with the puppies. So it's a very, very broad spectrum drop and it's really just up to a person finding what their little niche is, what they really enjoy. And there's lots of things that you can do as a dog trainer.
Super Pup is our follow-on course to puppy school classes designed to bring out your pup's inner superhero. These classes are designed for pups straight after puppy school or up until 10 to 12 months of age. Our higher education classes are called Puppy University. Aimed at teenage dogs from 7 to 10 months of age upwards, this course is designed to stretch training already learnt to new levels of excellence, as well as learning lots of new skills. In addition to my other classes, I also run short courses and workshops on parkour, scent work and hoopers. I always knew I wanted to work with animals. I really enjoyed taking care of my own animals at home, which were cats and dogs and rabbits and guinea pigs. So I was really lucky that when I was still at school, I managed to get a job at a local animal welfare charity that had rescued cats that were unwanted. So I worked there every weekend while I was still at school and looked after all of the cats there. I helped clean them out, I helped take care of them and brush them and groom them. And we looked after them medically. So we did medical treatments if they needed them under the supervisation of the staff and the vet. And I also found them new homes and I love that job so much that when I left school I went to work there full time for three years. I then decided that I wanted to work with dogs because I had dogs at home I really love dogs so I went to work for a local boarding kennels for a number of years so I looked after people's pets to begin with so when they went on holiday we used to take them for walks and take care of them and make sure they were well looked after while their own was away. But then I wanted a bigger challenge and I was very lucky that in the same place they had a quarantine unit. And many years ago, quarantine was where dogs came when they came from other countries into this country before we had pet passports. So the dogs used to stay for about six months at a time, so quite a long time. And they weren't allowed to be taken out because of the disease risk. So we used to have them in their kennels and we were very lucky that they had big kennels and big runs. So I used to spend my days helping to amuse all the dogs that were in quarantine so you used to play with them in their areas it used to do some training with them I used to brush them and take care of them keep them company and make sure that all the dogs I had were really well looked after until they were lucky enough to go home with their owners at the end of the quarantine stay so I did that for quite a few years and then I decided I wanted another challenge so at this point I was very lucky to get a job at another animal welfare charity this time with dogs so I went to work for this animal charity um, looking after them cleaning them out, walking them, taking care of them. And then I was very, very lucky to have an opportunity to become a behaviourist with this charity. So I was trained by behaviourists that were already there at the premises, um, was taken through courses and lots of education to become their behaviourist at the centre. And that's what I did for about 10 years. So we used to take in dogs that were unwanted by their owners, um, perhaps because they were moving house. It could also be that the dogs had behavioural problems that the owners could no longer um, care for so we used to try and rehabilitate them we also took in dogs that had terrible neglect and were found on the streets for example so again we used to help them recover and then find new homes for them there so I did that for a very long time and it was a very very fantastic job but after that I decided I wanted to try something else in the animal industry so I went and applied and was lucky to get a position at a veterinary surgery. So in the vet surgery, in the beginning, I started as a receptionist. So with all the knowledge I had accumulated over the years, I was very lucky to be able to pass that on to all the clients of worried, um, you know, worried people with their animals that maybe were a bit poorly. Um, and from there, I decided I really wanted to work with the animals. So I became a veterinary nursing assistant for another few years where we helped give animals injections and I held them for the vets and I assisted in on operations when the vet was doing various types of surgery um, and from there although I really enjoyed that job as well I got a new challenge which was to become a manager for the same vet practice so I did that for a number of years helping to overlook the practice and take care of all the staff and oversee all the animal care and everything um, but I decided in the end that my heart lied with what I'd been doing as a separate sideline for the past 14 years, which was I'd been a dog trainer. So when I was at the charity, 
um, the behaviourist um, that taught me for a very long time, decided to leave and set up her own training business, which was Puppy School. So Puppy School was geared at preventing problems from developing. So rather than actually rescue dogs coming with problems and, and it being a lot harder to train them when they're a lot older, she wanted to train puppies when they were babies to help give them all the skills so that they could have a good life um, in our world. So I decided that that sounded like a great thing to do. And so when she left, I followed her. So alongside my job at the vets for about 13 to 14 years, I'd been running a small dog training business. So I'd been running puppy classes alongside my full time work. But when I left the vets, that's what I decided I want to do full time. So I left the vets and I started a full career in dog training. So for the last four years, that's been my full time employment. So I have been a self employed dog trainer now um, for about four years. Being a dog trainer tends to mean that you are slightly obsessed with everything relating to dogs. So not only do I tend to fill my days with dogs, but I also choose to fill my evenings with dogs. So at home, I have three dogs of my own. This is my Border Collie Donut, who's around eight years of age now. Donut came home when she was a baby puppy from a rescue centre, and unfortunately she didn't have the best start in life, which has left her with a few quirky little behaviours. Dog trainers tend to take on project dogs that might not do so well in average homes. The best part about taking on a project dog is although they're quite hard work, they are our best teachers and they're the ones we can learn the most from. Dirty push. Good girl. 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 This hairy creature is my Cavalier Poodle mix called Hiccup. Hiccup's around six years of age and he also came from a rescue centre when he was a tiny puppy. Unfortunately, he did not have the best start in life either. He was part of an unwanted litter that wasn't sold and was brought into the rescue centre in pretty poor condition. Thankfully, he was fostered by one of the lovely staff and then I was given a call by one of my friends asking if I'd like to consider another dog. And of course, who could resist that face? Sneeze. Sneeze. Good boy. Sippy. Sneeze. Oh, and sneeze. Good This little man is my papillon called Bean Sprout, also known as Bean. He's the baby of the group as he's only just a year old now. We wanted a small dog to add to the family after my border collie died a few years ago and little Bean has fit the bill perfectly. Back up! Back up! Back up! Good boy! Ready? Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! Good boy! Not only do we have dogs in the house, but we also have five cats. We have Waffle, Custard, Chia, Mona and Moshi.